What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be discussing the several ways to record a synth into Cubase. In this example I'm going to be using one of my favorite fixed architecture synths, the Arturia Microfreak over here. Let's dive in and have a look. So there's a couple of ways of recording your synth into Cubase depending obviously on how you prefer to do it, whether you want to play the keys in live, whether you want to use your synth's sequencing capabilities, or whether you want to use Cubase's sequencing capabilities. So I want to discuss all of those ways of recording uh, your synth into Cubase. First and foremost, let's discuss the easiest, which is just recording your synth live into Cubase. So what we're going to want to do is set up a audio track. Let's say, for example, click add audio track and we get our audio track window. So here, you're gonna to wanna to select this input as the relevant input for your synth on your audio interface. So my audio interface, I know for a fact, my microfreak is going through to input number one. So I can select input number one and it automatically routes that for me. Here we can call this Arturia Microfreak and it adds us one channel. So for those kind of virtuosos who can play keys very well like in time and stuff like that not like myself what you're going to want to uh, wrap your head around is the thing called zero latency monitoring so there's pros and cons to doing this of course and also the thing is that there's various ways of setting it up with different audio interfaces sometimes you'll have an actual hardware switch on the front panel sometimes you'll have a controller like in my case over here so here you'll see that if i play the key on my microfreak over here you'll see that it's coming through in real time however you guys aren't hearing that because it's not routing through my daw right now so I, i'm hearing it in real time though here's the thing if we mute this channel that's kind of playing through to the speakers this is like my zero latency monitoring channel and we monitor in cubase if we press the switch there'll be a few milliseconds of latency and that's because obviously the digital processing involved for sound design purposes like when i'm just creating sounds i'll often add effects to the channel and that kind of thing but then when i start playing lead lines there's that little bit of latency involved and that can often throw you off so there's a remedy to that in most sound cards you'll have what's called a buffer size you can set that down as low as you like the thing is though the larger your projects are and the more cpu drain you have going on the less you're going to be able to turn this down without kind of adverse effects so let's say for example i set this to 32. you can see already there's quite a jump in the CPU usage. I'm now sitting at just over a quarter of my overall CPU percentage, whereas before that latency switch, I still had time to uh, kind of go. So I, this is something that you want to wrap your head around. You know, how do you work? Do you work in very big projects? Do you just want to record in, for example, like yourself playing piano or yourself playing one synth channel and you want to hear it with effects? maybe it's not so bad to turn that buffer size down because i mean here for example uh, what i can do is i can put on let's say um, an instance of snap heap and we can add some processing here to this snare sound let's say for example a transient shaper maybe a little bit of delay and maybe like a convolution uh, i'm not sure how much i'm going to be able to do in terms of processing here you'll see it'll come through in real time So you can hear there's that crackling that's happening um, because of this, the, because there's obviously quite immense processing happening with the convolution reverb. Now, if we set this back up to 2048, which is the maximum buffer size that uh, we can usually choose, now it comes through nice and clean. So for myself, you know, in instances where I'm generally doing sound design, I kind of want to hear what this is going to sound like in the context of effects and stuff like that. I generally use a full buffer size because, you know, I often I'm not playing my melodies in. Um, so I don't need that kind of zero latency monitoring. That being said, you can always just enable to monitor directly on your sound card and disable monitoring in, in Cubase, play it in and then turn on the monitoring or, or turn on the effects and listen to what it sounds like 
after the fact. So there's various different ways of doing this. Let's talk about how I would actually go about recording the sound into Cubase and another little trick that I like to do. Here, if we're monitoring here, let's just turn off the monitoring on my audio interface. All we need to do is just hit record and then it's as easy as just recording in some hits. So check this out. What it's done is it's recorded in the dry signal. So we can now dive in here and change these effects. Say for example, we want to turn off the reverb. We can change it after the fact. So it's recorded that in dry, which is pretty cool. So what if you wanna record it in with the effects? What if you have auto tune or some like vocal compression or something and you wanna record that in, in the chain? How do you do that? Here's an interesting little uh, trick in Cubase. Let's send this output uh, to a group channel. Let's just call this record group or rec group. Now what we can do is we can add another audio track, set this input to the record group and if we record enable both of these tracks, I'm just gonna delete this recording that we made. Uh, and let's just call this one effects. If we record enable both of these tracks, uh, I'm just gonna unloop it and then we hit record, check what happens. And now it's recorded us a channel with the wet effects as well as a channel with the dry so we can kind of remember you know if we wanted to print that effects in uh, there is a little bit of timing issues and stuff that will occur because of that but anyway um you can always line it up after the fact um, often when doing this kind of live recording in you're going to be chopping samples and lining them up and stuff anyway in a sound design context so this is generally how i go about that so the next example i want to deal with is how you would record a synth and take advantage of that synth's sequencing capabilities so if you have a synth with an arpeggiator or a sequencer or something like that and you're wanting to do the sequencing and write the kind of melodies on the synth the easiest way to do that would be to send a clock signal out of Cubase and into your synth. So in this context, I've got the Microfreak hooked up via USB. It's got MIDI, it's got CV. So there's various different ways that you can hook this up. Um, it's just, for me, it's just a bit easier um, just putting everything via USB. You can select it with a drop down menu, etc. So how would we go about setting up Cubase to send a clock output to a specific MIDI channel? In the project drop down menu, you've got a project synchronization setup over here. And this pops up this dialog window. So over here, you've got destinations. So what you use this for is where you send clock to various things. Here, what I wanna do is I'm just gonna disable the clock from my usual settings. I can always go back there. Um, and I wanna send a MIDI clock destination to the Arturia Microfreak. So then if we press okay, if we hit spacebar, nothing happens on the Microfreak because we have to jump over there and set up the sequencer. So I'm just gonna initialize the patch real quick. I think if we press this three times, it initializes the patch. So for this to work, what we're going to want to do is hold shift and enable the sequencer by pressing the R button. So you'll see sequencer on over there. You might not see it on my screen because it's a little bit blurred. My camera's not too great. Anyway, now when we press play in the DAW, okay, so we'll have to program a sequence in real quick. And on the microfreak, there's two, there's two ways of doing this. I'll do a separate video on how to do it. But quickly, what I'm going to do is just press record. That gives us the step recording mode. Okay, so then once we've recorded in a nice 16 step sequence, just press play like that.
So you can see we can slow down the tempo and it follows the project tempo. It also follows the project clock. So it lines up with the notes and stuff, which is pretty cool. That being said is because there's that latency, there's going to be a little bit of latency when you do line it up with your project. So when you do recording things like this, when you're working with the rest of the project, it might help to delay the audio of the rest of the project so that it syncs up and stuff. It's another little bit of a workaround and the last method is actually going to be the most powerful, but it kind of like skips out a couple of things which your synth might have. That being said, here we don't have to uh, modulate the cutoff and stuff manually on the synth. What we could actually do is set up a MIDI track, say add track. We could set this to send to Micro Freak, and then we can open a clip and let's just drop this MIDI down. And here we can say more and we can choose from a list of CC values. So here I'm going to have to quickly look up in the manual what the CC value of the cutoff in the Micro Freak is. Just give me one sec. Okay, so apparently control CC23 is the filter cutoff of the synth. So we can actually draw this in with MIDI. Let's see if this works. That's just a saw wave on the micro freak with some processing. Fuck, the thing is amazing. Amazing. So the last method does take a little bit of setup. However, it's arguably the most powerful way of using external instruments and synths and that kind of thing. So if you press F, if you press F4 or if you go here to studio, uh, audio connections, there's a drop down panel or a tab at the top here called external instruments. So what this allows you to do is add, for example, a it kind of acts like a VST and you can program in MIDI and it links everything for you. So here what we want to do is because I've got this on a mono channel, the Micro Freak is mono, uh, we want to turn off stereo returns and turn on one mono return. Then here, let's write here Arturia Micro, micro Freak and then let's hit OK. Here what we do is we select what input is coming. Okay, so it's input number one and we, d we link the MIDI device. So here what we're going to want to do is jump over to studio, studio setup, and we want to add a generic device, generic remote. In fact, I've already got one here, so we can actually just remove this one. I want to set this to the micro freak input and output. Just reset everything here. And then here, open MIDI device manager. So here we're going to want to go MIDI devices, create device if you haven't got one already. And then here I'm going to call this micro freak. Um, you can choose what type of things it's sending, um, whether it's sending SysX like preset stuff and that's getting very advanced. I'm not going to get into that here. Let's just say, okay, it's called micro freak and then let's say, okay. So here what we want to do is jump into MIDI device manager. And here, set the Micro Freak to output to the correct MIDI channel. And then here's an interesting thing is you can actually set up your own panel, let's say add panel, with knobs to control the cutoff. So you can create like your own VST controller within this to control the device, which is pretty crazy. This is a whole other thing though. I'm not going to get into how this works because this is a whole, like I said, a whole other thing on its own. Um, which I haven't really explored too much. So anyway, now what we can do is let's just close all of this down. We can say add instrument track and you'll see Arturia Micro Freak is actually loaded up 
So I actually want to turn off the sequencer because now it's automatically sending the clock, which is pretty cool. So now it means that we don't necessarily need to send it a clock because it automatically picks it up from the project. Uh, it's popped up that uh, panel as well. So if we had made knobs and stuff to control it, then we would be able to do so. But like I said, if you want a separate video on that, I'll do that. This video is getting pretty lengthy. Um, so I will do a separate video on creating custom control panels and stuff if you do want to see that. That being said, now what we can do is we can go in here and write in the notes. So this is particularly powerful for people like myself who do write a lot of stuff in a similar scale uh, and then transpose it. So now we can end up writing like a more interesting MIDI line that's maybe more steps than what the Microfreak allows or with polymetric things or stuff like that. So now what we can do is we can actually apply effects directly onto this channel. Um, so this makes it easier in terms of like routing and stuff. Like when we come back to the project later or when we go to another project, we can just add this like as a VST and everything is kind of nested within a single thing. So that's pretty cool. So now you can actually render it like a traditional plugin or something like that. The difference here is it automatically picks up that it's an external instrument and it does a render in real time. So it, the renders will be a little bit slower. Yeah, that's a pretty cool thing just to make the whole routing, the whole process just a little bit easier to wrap your head around. How cool is that, hey? Super workflow friendly way of doing it. Um, as you can see, I haven't done this because I often use my hardware stuff in a more live context. So when I'm creating stuff, I often just use plugins because plugins can offer a very similar style of sound and that kind of thing. Um, certain things obviously are better in hardware, whatever. This is not about that. Hopefully this just gives you guys an idea of how you can use your synths in uh, recording them into your projects and stuff. Yeah, that's about it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you want to support my channel, then head on over to my Patreon. The link is in the description. I got various perks for you, like a lot of the presets and the things that I make in my videos. So definitely head on over there and check that out if you want to support this channel. Otherwise, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button or at the very least, just hitting that like button if this video helped you guys. Thank you so much. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.